What's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Eric Duke II. If you want the best source for high school basketball in Southeast Ohio, you came to the right place. We decided to be extra today. We have two new segments and two teams not in our coverage appearing on the program, so stay tuned for episode three of Hardware Heroes. Man, I love that jingle. It gets me excited to do TV. Thank you all for watching the program. Let me finish breaking down the agenda for tonight. We'll have our reporters deliver the good stuff from the week. Blake Baker is back to break down something of his choosing. And as always, we will shut down the program with our Heroes of the Week. Now, as of Friday, this is what the standings look like. The Hawking, they make life easy for me. No changes. Waterford is number one. Eastern is one loss back. Belpre, two losses back. Now, the Lady Wildcats have nine games left, while the Lady Eagles and Golden Eagles have six games. Federal Hawking. The ladies continue to hover around 500 while Wahama is still looking for their first conference win. The gentlemen of the Hawking have movement outside of the top three. Belpre looks to be fighting for seeding. They are tied for the third best conference record with Southern and Miller. Wahama's lost to Belpre on Friday, knocks it back. And the Rebels and Lancers, they remain, I guess they combined for one win this year. Now, over in the Ohio, it's all about Vinton County. Oh, wait, we're gonna start with the girls. Alexander, they're still pacing everybody. Vinton County knocked off Nelsonville, York, which moves them two games back of Alexander. And River Valley, they picked up their second conference win. Wilson and Athens, they're still going back and forth at the bottom. Now, for the boys. The girls stepped up, did what they had to do. The boys took a step back. They fell to Alexander on Friday. Now, they are still pacing everybody, still bodying teams, but they are not undefeated anymore. So we'll have to see how the top three shakes out. Now we only cover nine of these 16 teams every week, so we're gonna expand on our coverage of this segment. Senior reporter Joseph Payton is here on desk with me, and he has two teams that are worthy of praise. So let's start with the Lady Eagles of Belfry. You know, Eric mentioned in the Eagles there, I got to see them play earlier this week. If there's one thing that these people that are watching our show right now need to know about them, it's that they've got some shooters out there in Belpre. They beat River Valley 61 to 44 on Monday night, and in that win, they had four different players knock down one from beyond the arc. One player in particular that really impressed me and that our viewers should really take note of this year is Cheyenne Barker. This girl can flat out play basketball. She had 24 points on Monday night, and 12 of those came from three-point land. She's got great lateral quickness that allows her to stay in front of people on the defensive end and shake defenders on the offensive end. She's pretty much in range as soon as she steps into the gym. If you give her any bit of space, she'll pull the trigger and knock it down. So Eric, she's definitely someone that people should keep their eye on when they're up against Belpre this year. Yeah, they, they're third place in the Hawking for a reason. They've put in work this year. It's clear improvement from last season. For sure, that couldn't be any more true with this team. At this time last year, they were sitting at nine and seven, and today in 2017, they're at 12 and four. So coach Chris Murray has to be very happy about that. So at this point, they only have four losses. The first came against South Webster on the road back on December 10th. Then their next two losses came against some very good ball teams. Eastern, just three years removed from a state championship, and then Waterford, the defending state champs in Division Four. They didn't play well on the road against Megs though, but they've since won three games in a row. So this team is heating up right now, and I think they can be pretty dangerous come tournament time. They can make some noise. All they have to do, they have to beat Waterford or Eastern. Now, on the boys' side, the Tornadoes, they've been putting in work. They're sitting at third in their conference too. That's right, they're a top three team in their conference, and after what I saw from them this week, they've got a pretty athletic and feisty team out there, Eric. I was out in racing this past Tuesday to see the Tornadoes play Waterford, and I really liked what I saw from them in this game. Southern ended up on the wrong end of the scoreboard, losing 68-53, to but I can assure you the score doesn't quite match up with how the game went. Waterford is a very good basketball team, and Southern, they had them on the ropes towards the end of the game. After being down by as many as 17 points in the second half, Southern rallied to cut it to just two points in the fourth quarter, but they just couldn't finish it out. So this Southern lineup, they're super athletic. As I mentioned earlier, they've got Tyler Blevins running the point, Dylan Smith and Blake Johnson, they're always a threat to score the basketball. You absolutely cannot leave Weston Thorla open from three-point range, and Crenson Rogers, man, he is an absolute force under the basket. So their record right now, Eric, it's got them right around 500 at this point, but don't let that fool you. I can assure you, this is a very good team. Now, if you were to pick one intangible that you like about this team, what would it be? 
Oh, I would have to say their emotion. These guys, they don't shy away from playing with any emotion. And I hate to see teams with good athletic ability that don't play with any emotion. That's not them. You can tell they have fun out there. Basketball's fun. You're supposed to have fun with your teammates. They do. And I think for that reason, if, they're ever, if you ever think they're out of a ball game, trust me, they're not. They're going to stay in it because of that reason. Uh, emotion is always a good thing as long as you can channel it towards wins. Joey P., thank you, sir. Now, though we pack each show with as much information as we can, there's always more to give. Slide onto our website at wob.org where you'll find video recaps and game stories of all your TBC teams. Explore the other sports and click around to find new stories that are important to you. Now what's important to coaches generally is winning. The Lady Tomcats have struggled to pick up wins this season and in order to get back on track they had to beat the number one team in the state, the Waterford Lady Wildcats. I have Trimble reporter Duncan Goldberg with me. Duncan, what's good out in Gloucester? Well Eric, for those Lady Tomcats, not that much. You knew going into this game that it was going to be a tough matchup for the Lady Tomcats because in their first meeting, they fell to Waterford 63 to nine. The problems that the girls had in this one were the same problems that they had in the last time, rebounding and turnovers. It was like every single player for the Wildcats brought their own Windex. They were all cleaning the glass as seven players were able to record an offensive rebound. And in total, Waterford was able to grab 20-0 boards. The Lady Tomcats zone was putting them in tough positions, which was allowing the taller and more physical Lady Wildcats to grab the rebounds. They were able to get second and third chances all night long. And on the offensive end, it was a struggle taking care of the ball. The Lady Tomcats turned the ball over a total of 24 times. Coach Richards was said, said it was a major problem. But Coach Richards also mentioned how proud he was of his girls. In the first matchup, he said his girls gave up. But in this one, he saw the fight in his girls, especially when they cut it to only a 10-point lead with a minute left in the first half. It's all about motivation. They're right there, but they got to finish strong. But for the boys, are they hitting their stride? Oh, absolutely, Eric. The boys have only one conference loss so far this season. And on Friday, those boys were cooking. If you don't know the name Randy Hickson by now, then you better learn it, because he's only a junior. And in Friday's 79-44 win over the Eastern Eagles, that bad man dropped 29 points, 6 dimes, and 6 boards. In the first half alone, he was 6 of 8 from the 3 point line. But he wasn't the only one stuffing the stat sheet for the Tomcats. Tyler Slack, Cam Curry, and Alex Kaufman also had major contributions in the effort. Curry was facilitating all night long as he dropped 8 assists. In Slack, he dropped 12 points and 5 boards, while Kaufman was grabbing boards and putting up points, as he had 10 points and 8 rebounds. The boys were really working well together, and it seemed like everyone was getting in on the offensive effort, as a total of 11 Tomcats were able to record points. And this was the perfect time for the Tomcats to find that groove they were looking for. If the boys can keep winning their conference games, they have a really good chance of picking up their third straight TVC talking, Hawking title. And we know who they're trying to chase, them Waterford Wildcats. They just got to go out there and handle their business. Thank you, Duncan. But now we are about to get serious. We have the ladies from Alexander and Nelsonville, York, fighting for the top spot in the TBC Ohio. Alexander currently has a two-game lead as of Friday, but Matt Cuddy and Connor Martin are here to tell us who's going to win this matchup later on this month. Matt, who's winning? I'm, here, I'm right here, Eric. <laughs> Eric, nothing is sweeter than some good old revenge. And after falling to Alexander the first time around, I know the Lady Buckeyes will be looking forward to the opportunity to even up this season series and stay towards the top of the TVC Ohio standings. With Jesse Addis running the show and a strong senior cast surrounding her, I'm confident this team has what it takes to step up in an important game like this. A little confidence can go a long way. What about you, Connor? Eric, now I know Matt over there called this rematch some sweet revenge for the Spartans, or for, sorry, for NY, but for the Spartans, this is just another game on their schedule. Yes, this time Alexander will be playing on the road, but the leadership of the Richardson sisters and Jayla Mace, along with a dominant defense, has helped this team win nine straight, and I do not see that streak ending anytime soon. They've looked really dominant this year. Matt, what does Nelson New York need to do to pull this one out? Hey, I think it starts and it ends with Jesse Addis. Uh, the, the, senior, uh, the junior point guard, I'm sorry, is now a third year uh, veteran uh, starter there on Varsity, she's coming off an all-hero team selection. She's averaging almost 14 points a game. 
Uh, for a sissy game, you know, if she can finish at the rim, she can get into the paint, finish some layups, hit some threes, play some tough defense. I, I think when she plays well, NY plays Dressie, well. Yeah, Tressie Addison, she is a great player, but Alexander has some own players of their own. The two Richardson sisters are down, and they can score down low, and they can shoot around the arc. And when they're not making plays, Jayla Mace is. And that helps his team score almost 60 points a game, which is 10 points more than Nelson New York is able to. Yeah, I know. J Jayla Mace is definitely a big factor in this game. But I like uh, Jordan Fick down low, actually. She's a senior for NY. She's going to be a big part of that supporting cast that I talked about earlier. Her, Cameron Dupler on the outside, hitting threes, and Mary-Kate McCullough could be huge coming off the bench, well, averaging thing eight is, and a half though, points per game. When you go into point scoring, Alexander has been able to score 62.7 or more times this year, while NY has only been able to do that twice. So yes, NY does have a good offense, but it doesn't quite match up with Alexander. Another point that that makes is when you look at the same teams that these teams have played, common opponents, NY has beaten them by an average of 16 points. Yeah, and that's good and all, but Alexander has dominated those teams and by 43 points more And in the one game that they did play, in the one game they did play, uh, NY kept them below 40 points. Yeah, NY has done that. that? They, they won the game? I, I said that before. They did win uh, that game. Alexander they kept them under 40 Alexander points. They can go on forever, but it's going to be a tough matchup. Definitely one that we're going to love to watch. Seeing the best of the best is always interesting to watch, but it doesn't get much better. Gentlemen, it was a pleasure. Thank you guys for breaking it down for us. Now, do you guys remember last year's host, Sean Nide? He's the man in all, but he was too ugly for TV. So now he sticks to hosting his radio program, Sports Beat. He'll talk about anything that's popping in the sports world. Ohio University sports, high school sports, and even professional sports. Be sure to tune in on Thursdays at 6 o'clock p.m., 13, WOUB 1340 a.m., or online at WOUB.org slash listen. Now, it's always fun being a hater, but we're halfway through the show, and most teams are halfway through their seasons. Online host. Blake Baker joins me now. Blake, what you got for us today? Well, I got a breakdown, man. They don't call this thing Baker's Breakdown for nothing. But yes, we are approaching the home stretch, and conference title races are heating up. Teams that lead each conference have done so pretty much all season long, but that doesn't mean there aren't other contenders flying under the radar. So let's focus on them, the dark horses, the underdogs. Who doesn't love a good comeback story? And we'll start with Fed Hawks girls, who are a couple games back in that TBC Hawking race. And if they want to find themselves on top, they got to find their stroke from beyond the arc. they got to get their shooters like Destiny Tabler, Hannah Dunphy, Kaylee McPherson. they got to get hot, and they can find a lot of success in wins from, the, from deep. And if they heat up, they could, it could cause trouble for their opponents. They'll establish much-needed confidence, which they will need if they want to take down uh, Waterford. And they got to play clean defense. They can't let those scores get into foul trouble. Yeah, Fed Hawk, they... They're putting it together this year. They're hovering around 500. What about the Ohio girls? Yeah, Vinton County has had dominance on the boys' side, and the girls are starting to turn their season around, too. If they want to win the Ohio, they got to apply consistent pressure. They had a big win over NY, and they stifled Jesse Addis. They made her very uncomfortable out there, frustrated her. Uh, difficult for the offense to get passes off. They contested every shot, but they got to play all 32 minutes. We know that they can score fast. We've seen that. But they have to score consistently throughout the game and not let the other team pull away. they got to match them late in the game, too, and convert when it matters. Now, the boys' side of the Ohio is loaded, loaded. We saw Vinton County lose. Who else do you think can challenge them? Well, they lost to those Alexander boys, who I think have a good shot at coming from behind to win this conference. But to get big wins, they got to get offensive looks inside the perimeter. Frankly, they're not a very good three-point shooting team, only 26%, but Chase Harris is a force down low. they got to be able to get him looks inside, and if he can't, spread it around a little bit. they got Luke Kish, Stone Markins, Irwin. Those guys can finish if need be, but they got to get opportunities inside the arc. And keep showing tremendous effort. This is a young team. We've talked about it. But they're starting to hit their stride. They play with great effort with their backs against the wall. they just got to continue to play with that mentality and they can really make some noise in this conference. All right, last division to talk about, the TBC Hawking and the boys. Who's going to pull off this division? See, I don't, I don't know if there's any dark horse in this, in this conference necessarily. I think that there's two, maybe three horse race in this one. Waterford and Trimble have consistently been at the top of that conference. And Southern, uh, Trimble hosts, or excuse me, Waterford hosts Southern and Trimble down the stretch. Uh, I think this one is Waterford's to lose. Yeah, to close it out, they just got to run the table, do what the package did. That's what I'm talking about. Blake, I'm excited to see how these teams do. Thank you for being on with us. Now, if you missed any games, any segments, our show this week, don't be concerned. You can find them on our YouTube page, WUB PBS. Blake and I will recap games throughout the week with our reporters. We'll go further, talk about which teams are fun, what teams get you in your feelings. I mean, we all have good stuff, you know, who's mean and nasty, so check our page out. I wish I could be mean and nasty. Whenever I step out on the court, I, I like to respectfully bust my opponent. That's not what Vin County is about. Vinton County reporter Tyler Corbett, who's all about being extra, joins me on the desk. What's happening out in MacArthur? Well, with the high-quality basketball we see every week out in Viking country, it's always a little extra, Eric. But uh, the Lady Vikings, their week started off with a bit of a speed bump. Coughing up the rock 21 times makes any game hard to win. 
and the Lady Vikings found that out on Monday, taking on the Maysville Lady Panthers. The girls could get nothing going on their way to an 80 to 55 loss. The lone bright spot for the Lady Vikings was Cassie Bentley's 22 points. The girls' play, though, would take a complete 180 uh, on Thursday's game against the Nelson New York against the Nelson New York Buckeyes. Excuse me. In their most impressive game of the season, the girls were able to outlast NY in a cagey affair, winning 63 to 44. The girls jumped out to an early 22 to 13 first quarter lead that they would never give up. It looked like the Lady Buckeyes would come back, being within eight at some points. Then Darian Radabaugh took over. Radabaugh hit three straight threes to the Lady Vikings to put the game away. Radabaugh would finish the game with 17 points. Yeah, the, the yeah, impressive win yeah. Yeah, has the Lady Vikings really, they really have the thought of back to back titles on their mind. And yeah, the boys also really have work to do if they want that as well. Six games left, they're shooting their shot definitely. Now the boys, they were the clear favorite heading into the week, dominant all year, man. Yeah, on Tuesday, they were actually ranked number six in Division II in the AP poll. And it was their mission to prove that they deserve that title. And it was all going well until Friday night when the Alexander Spartans played them on their home court. And the Spartans were able to do what no one's done all year, defeating the Vikings 73 to 71. It was a back and forth affair from tip off as both teams were able to get easy buckets in the paint. Defending the paint was an issue all night and cost the Vikings in the final seconds. Alexander's Luke Kish would drain a close range jumper with two seconds left to hand Vinton County their first loss. As the final bucket dropped, Alexander fans would storm the court and it was a truly historic night out in Albany. Although the loss was tough, the week started out well for the boys as they defeated Maysville on Monday. The boys coasted to an 88-64 win against the Panthers. Yeah, a few games left, man. They yeah. gotta keep it going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Vikings at one point led 19 to nothing in that game. So, I mean, clearly they got a lot of talent. Maysville really had no hope. Tristan Bartow, you hear that name a lot. He was up to his usual stuff. 30 points, 8 assists, 6 steals. So, I mean, they have to recover from a tough conference loss. But if anyone can recover and take the crown, it'll be the Vikings. Without a doubt. They gotta finish strong. I expect them to body teams. Thank you, Tyler. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have for you guys now is the Vikings. They're looking for the championship while Fed Hawk boys, they lost to Waterford 101-234. That's 67 points. Y'all need to stop playing games, man. Y'all are hurting my feelings. I don't want the hashtag pray for Fed Hawk to be a thing. It shouldn't be a thing. I mean, if there was any tweet out there expressing my pain, my man Reese captured it with this tweet, and it is our tweet of the week. Come on, Lancers. Dang, let's change the subject. The Megs Marauders. The boys are making some noise now. They had a few losing streaks this year, but they are a half game back of the TBC lead. Reporters Clark Woolley and Joe Hennessy are here to talk about what's popping in Pomeroy. Yeah, well, Eric, the boys team this past week lost in a high scoring game to point 83 to 75. But the talk of this week was their play against the Wellston Rockets. To start the game, they honored the death of Austin Milliken, who lost his battle with AVM on January 5th. Megs wore t-shirts with his name and number on them, on them as their warmups. Yeah, Clark, the Marauders honoring his death was a great scene when you saw the team run on the court. As for the game, Megs beat Wellston 76 to 44. The Rockets gave up 27 turnovers. Just as they started to make a run, they would turn it over and Megs took advantage. Yeah, you're right, Joe. Senior Christian Maddox scored 25 points, had four steals and three assists, but the talk of the town is the future for Megs. Freshman Weston Bear scored 12 points, had three assists and three steals, and committed zero turnovers. His ability to get steals and play point guard opens up the floor for Maddox, who doesn't shy away from shooting his shots. Yeah, Clark, also playing their first home game in eight games probably gave them an extra boost to show out tonight. Eric, you know, we have to see what they can do. You know, they play Alexander in a big game next Friday. They have a week until that game. Yeah, the Marauders, they have to come ready to play. Now, the Lady Marauders, they've been struggling as of late. Did they resolve their issues? Well, you know, um, Eric, it didn't get much easier for the Lady Marauders to start the week as they played host to Hawking Powerhouse Eastern on Monday. Megs gave the Eagles all they could handle and nearly pulled off the upset, but eventually fell 50 to 43. Yeah, Clark, the game against Eastern just added to the long list of tough opponents that Coach Kaysen has on the schedule for his girls. I was able to catch up with him after the game with his thoughts on this difficult stretch of games and how he thinks it will benefit his team for the rest of the season. Like our last seven games have been really tough. I mean, we've played a couple D1 teams from West Virginia. We played Logan. I mean, we had Alex, we had Eastern. So, you know, we've been into a tough stretch of our schedule. We knew it wouldn't be easy. We have uh, seven out of our last 10 games at home. And uh, so hopefully here we can uh, start gathering up some wins. we got a tough game versus Jackson coming up Thursday, so we're going to get back to work and see what happens. Yeah, you know, we just wanted to add that Megs, in fact, had six of their ten remaining games at home instead of seven. Coach had a little bit of a miss up there, but, hey, we all make mistakes. Yes, sir. I mean, they, they just got to keep doing what they do. Thank you, guys. Got to put points on the board. Now, a good defense can be a better offense at some points in time. Whatever it takes to win, right? 
The Athens Bulldogs need to find ways to win, both boys and girls. Nick Ursini is making an appearance on the program to elaborate on Athens' struggles. Unfortunately, it was a bad week for Athens, and one they would like to forget, Eric, both teams were plagued with turnover this week, which resulted in both teams losing. The boys fell to the new Lexington Panthers 71-62 in a very sloppy game. The Bulldogs started the game very slow with poor ball control, which put them in a hole early that they couldn't recover from. They were leading 18-15 at the end of the first quarter, but a 6-0 run by the new Lexington Panthers helped them regain the lead that they would not surrender. Despite 30 points from star Griffin Lutz, the Bulldogs were stone cold from the field. Athens shot 19, 4 of 19 excuse me, from three-point land and just 21 of 50 from the field. If they want to get back in the win column, they need to slow down and let their star do what he does best. Fortunately for them, they get a next chance um, Monday night when they get to go place River Valley, and they also need a big showdown, Vinton County, next Friday. It's gonna be a game, man. Griffin Lutz and Tristan Bartow are two of the best we have in our coverage. Now, the Lady Bulldogs have picked up 66% of their wins in the past 10 days. Were they able to keep that going? Unfortunately not, Eric. Their two-game win streak was snapped by the Alexander Lady Spartans, who dominated them 77-20 to Thursday night. The Bulldogs had a lot of turnovers, 15 to be exact, and Alexander had multiple chances for easy buckets and wide open three-pointers. After they fell behind 23-5 to at the end of the first quarter, it was all Alexander for the rest of the game. Kenna Rice led the Lady Spartan offense with 20 points, and Olive Harder was the leading scorer for Athens with 8. With this win, Alexander increases their win streak to 9 straight, and they're still on top of the TVC Ohio. As for Athens, they get their next chance for a victory Monday night when they travel to River Valley. Hey, they have a few weeks left. Basketball season is already almost over, man. But thank you for the good stuff, Nick. Now, one way to keep up with your heroes is Facebook. Get instant access to our written and video recaps through our Facebook page, Hardwood Heroes. Give us a like or two. I want to see some thumbs fly up on the screen. We'll start going live from the newsroom, from the studio, from my white boy that someone erased. We'll get that up and popping here in the near future. Now, another team trying to reclaim their title of state champion are the Eastern Lady Eagles. I'm here with Eastern reporter Nate Moore. Did the Eagles get any closer to their goal? They absolutely did, Eric. Eastern took care of both Megs and Federal Hawking this week. When it came to the offensive side of the ball, the Lady Eagles dominated the hustle stats column in both games as they scored a lot of their points through fast break and second chance opportunities. However, one component of Eastern's offense that really impressed me this week was the poise of sophomore point guard Jess Parker. Due to both their games being away this week, there were times where Eastern's offense could have easily become flustered, but Parker stayed calm and took control as the head of Eastern's offense. On the other side of the ball, the bottom line is that the Eagles play smart, fundamental basketball every time they're on the court. Due to this consistency, Eastern is able to execute their defensive schemes to perfection. Another thing the defense does is that they limit the amount of fouls they commit each game. Limiting the number of fouls Eastern commits is absolutely vital to their overall success as they only have seven active players right now on their roster. By staying out of foul trouble, Eastern is able to maintain a balanced rotation between their starters and role players. Yeah, there's nothing surprising coming from a former state champion. Now the boys, they're still trying to pull it all together. What did they do this week? Well, when it came to the Eastern boys this week, they did the opposite of the girls as they dropped both their matchups against Miller and Trimble. One of Eastern's biggest weaknesses was their low post defense and defensive rebounding in both games. They struggled to keep the ball on the perimeter and outside of the paint, which led to a multitude of close, easy shots. Also, with their defensive rebound lacking, this led to their opponents getting a number of second chance scoring opportunities. Another thing that affected Eastern's game was the number of turnovers they committed on offense. In their game against Miller, Eastern had 12 first half turnovers, and in their game against Trimble, they recorded 24. Not only did turnovers disrupt Eastern's ball movement, but it also led to more scoring chances for their opponents. When asked about his team's recent play, this is what Coach Jeremy Hill had to say. We got to get better defensively, we got to get better offensively, we got to start shooting the ball better. I don't think there's one phase of the game that we're very good at right now. Even though the Eastern recognizes that they're in a rough spell right now, I know for a fact that this team is not going to give up when it comes to giving it their all every time they step onto the hardwood. Yeah, hard is so much of the game, they got to put it all together. Thank you, Nate. Now we have a new segment for you guys called Rebound. What, how, how does it going to work? I'm here with Waterford reporter Scott McDonald. I'm going to say a word, and he's going to describe what that word means to his team. Scott, you ready to go, man? Let's, go, let's do it. All right, so your first word is press. Crutch. The Waterford boys basketball team have been dominant in their division up to this point. However, they have been susceptible to allowing their opponent to come back into the game. For example, the Wildcats were up 17 points in the third quarter. Southern came back within three. So how did Coach Sims respond? He went to the half-court press, snuffed out any chance of tornadoes coming back. So they lean like a crutch on the press when they feel that momentum swinging against them. I like it, putting that press to good use. Your second word is balance. 
Unselfish. I've been so impressed with the way the Wildcats share the ball. Any starter on their team can be the leading scorer on any given day, whether it's Isaac Huffman, Travis Potmeyer, Cody Harris, Bryce Hilverding, Jordan Welch, Tyler McCutcheon, whoever. It does not matter. But here's what makes them so special. When they're not stuffing points in the stat sheet, they are helping elsewhere, grabbing rebounds, swinging passes, always looking for the open man. That is what has made this unit so conducive. Combine the balanced scoring with unselfish play, and you have a team that is undefeated in the TVC. Now that unselfish play was also the key factor like you said, in that 101 to 34 win over Fed Hawk. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Now, what they've been all year is consistent. That is your third word, consistency. Yeah, and then it's, I think of dominance. Now, that word can certainly apply to both Waterford's boys and girls teams, but the girls have had longer sustained success. And this year is certainly no different. They remain undefeated in their division, and it does not look like they are slowing down anytime soon. They defeated Trimble 51 to 24 and have already begun their victory lap, if you will in the TVC since they've already beaten every team up to this point at least once. And Allie Curran has been on an absolute tear as usual and with Megan Ball and Rachel Adams continuing their performances, I expect the Wildcats to be in a very similar position as they were last year. Yeah, they, I mean, you haven't, they haven't proven you wrong yet. What, nope. I mean, what else do they have to do? Is there anything that they can do to get better? The girls team, well, what, one thing that I want to see is I want to see the world players just getting more involved. Yes, we know about the big three that they have, but what about the other two? What about their other starters? Right. What about their bench play? Now, as we've seen, the bench play is very important as tournament, co tournament time comes to play. So that's one of the things that I want to see the Waterford Wildcats to be better at. Oh, yeah. Getting good depth, that'll take you a long way. Scott, thank you for the great work. Now, Scott, uh, Scott he does good things for us, but he could never be my hero of the week because he's not a baller. Blake is back, and as always, we're here to talk about our heroes of the week. So. I started off last week. You have the girls this week, man. All right, let's kick it off. I picked a Viking last week, but one Lady Viking had a week we just could not ignore. Cassie Bentley led her squad to crucial conference victory Thursday night and is making Coach Rod Bentley a proud coach and father so far. Vinton County star averaged 20 points against Maysville and Nelsonville York this week. She now had 14 rebounds against the Lady Buckeyes, and she also had four steals and dished out three assists. When the Lady Vikings needed a hero, she delivered. She can take the rock coast to coast for a transition score, find a wide open shooter for a three point dagger. She can make her matchup a non factor with her defense and rebounding ability. And she's going to be a huge factor if Vinton County wants to find yet another share of that TBC Ohio crown. Yeah, they're working on it. They had a great victory against NY. Now, my hero of the week had a very impressive stat line. And he was very essential to Nelsonville York's three point win this week. Let's talk about Aaron Davis right quick. The Buckeyes won in double overtime 76 to 73. He had 31 of those 76 and he pumped out a double double. This was the definition of taking over a game. Always on the attack, always putting pressure on the Lions, just always in the interior, drop steps, fadeaways, and ones, getting boards too. Stop playing with me, man. He plays with great energy. I mean, he's mean and you aren't taking a rebound from him. I dare you, spell his name with two A's. Bet he'll hit you with a two piece and a biscuit. And the Buckeyes, they're going to need his effort if they hope to climb back up in the TBC standings. They're sitting at 1-5 and five right now in the conference. And, yeah, they, they're really struggling right now. they got to put it all together if they want any shot at this title match. Yeah, but that was a huge win against Liberty Union in double overtime. Hopefully that can establish some momentum as they get even hotter into this conference race. Definitely. It was definitely a fun game to watch as well. Now it's time to shut it down. So you can keep up with all of our content at wub.org slash heroes. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Harwood Heroes. You can follow your boy as well. And tag me at junior underscore three. Thank you for watching. Please keep up with all of our stuff. We have a pleasure doing what we do. And as always, I'm your host, Eric Three the Second, reminding you to be heroic. This chair is so creaky. I, know. I wonder if you can hear it on the microphones. I hope not. I hope, I hope not, not too. I'm trying to